Good morning, and I suppose a happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone listening today, whether you're at home or abroad. It's Tree Talk episode 177. Myself, Jack Neville, and Matt Callan of the Weekly Observer and Vale Star. Matt, happy St. Patrick's Day to you. And and to you, Jack, and 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 to everybody at home and abroad, of course. Um, it's a it's a very special day, a, a, a day to be really Irish. And certainly, I think St. Patrick is looking down on us today because. Um, you know, the song says, Hail Glorious St. Patrick. He has given us a glorious St. Patrick's Day 2022. And um, it's great that, um, you know, there's so much happening today um, that wasn't happening for the last two St. Patrick's Days. And uh, that, that there are a myriad of parades, not just around the country, but around County Limerick at various, various locations. And um, we'd encourage people just to get out and... and um, and enjoy the parades and let's hope for the parade organizers, um, wherever they may be, that, that, that they will go successfully for them. Yeah, I suppose it just kind of shows how far we've come in the last two years. It was kind of the start of 2020 around March that everything was put to halt. So to see everything back today and, as you said, all the parades around the place, it's just another, it is, another good, good I suppose we can't, we can't let our guard down with the hospital numbers going in the wrong direction again. No. Um, the, the highest number of people in hospital... Um, um for um in 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 over 13 months yesterday but you know we encourage people not to let that guard down in relation to covid yeah. um you know um we, we really need to get rid of this thing now i know the ic no icu numbers are stable and hovering around just over 40 but um like there has been a 65 percent increase in the number of people that are in hospital um uh, with COVID, not uh, the half of them went in, not for COVID, but um, uh, it's you know it's it, it, it's it's impacting on the health service and I suppose um, in, in, in impacting on the, the the service that's available to us all um, because of having to make provisions for COVID. So uh, you know for what it's what we'd appeal again that 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 people just do not let their guard down this. This thing isn't gone away yet, um, but, no. but um, uh, it's still alive in our community and, and still very prevalent. Yeah, just be be careful, but make sure to go out there and enjoy yourself on our national holiday. I suppose today today is, is a great day in many regards, but for, I suppose yesterday we had the untimely passing of Tom Madigan, a man you know well, a man that did so much for Limerick GA and ladies football in particular. So we just send our condolences to Tom's family and I'm sure you have something to say about for the men. Yeah, Jack, I, I I would like would like to concur entirely with with, with your expression of, of of condolences to Kay Madigan and 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 the Madigan family. I, I knew Tom quite well through through ladies football, and um, um, like Tom Tom devoted over three decades to the promotion of ladies Gaelic in in Limerick ladies Gaelic football, and he was one of the founder members of and. The driving force, I suppose, in spearheading the formation of Limerick Ladies Football, and um, right up till um, about a year and a half ago, he 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 he, he was um, very 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 involved in it. And I suppose it's it's appropriate, um, if my memory serves me correctly, that um, the, the 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 Limerick Senior Ladies Football Championship trophy is dedicated to Tom's name. And um, he, I, th I think he, he he presented it, and um, like the, the amount of time that Tom invested in 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 Limerick Ladies Gaelic um, was was absolutely phenomenal. If there was one constant factor in Limerick, a one constant element in Limerick Ladies Gaelic since its formation, it was the late Tom Madigan, and um, he a huge huge loss. First of all. To his family and to his community, and to and to ladies Gaelic, and we, we, we extend our deepest sympathy to his family. Yeah, once again, I, I'll, I'll concur with you there, Matt. Um, I just realised we didn't play our intro, so I'm just going to play our intro there, and then we can get into this weekend's action. We obviously have hurling football and ladies football in Camogie to look back on. We've a Crow Cup final today, so it's going to be a busy one. So stay tuned for all that. The impression the game we get all with what you put into is like a walk of life. If you're good enough, go and get it. No more about it. Control in the centre of the field from Kilkenny as Richie Bennett sends it high and over the bar. 
your mother sends you down to the shop for a pound worth of goods and she gives you 50 pence, you can't get the pounds worth of goods, can you? Just about kept in. Oh, well, Todd, Shawnee Buckley. To do that to Tomas O'Shea, he deserves to score from here. One of the highlights of the second game. Let me find out there from the war court today. No more about him. He made all the run. That was it. Put the ball over the barrel, the fact of it, and that's it. No ifs, no buts. Is there much time left? No sympathy in this game for anybody. I suppose, Matt, we'll, we'll start with the latest football. Yeah, Jack, just before we go on, I always enjoy that. And um, yeah, it's, 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 it's very select uh, moments in, in Limerick's GA history. And, you know, it could be embellished by adding the Kyle Hayes goal. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of recent memories. I think he lynched us. Um, Declan Hannon lift and the Liam McCarthy, they could all be added. But for today, I think we'll start with the latest football just in memory of Tom Madigan. And they're obviously out this Sunday in uh, the league semi final against Fermanagh in Kinnegad at two o'clock. Um, it's been a very, very good year for Limerick for, for Graham Shine side, three from three in the group stages. Now to take on Fermanagh that beat him in the 2020 All Ireland semi final and beat him fairly comprehensively on the day, to be fair. Um, revenge could be on the cards for Limerick. Yeah, but before, but, but before I talk about the specific uh, for Mana game, I would like to um, just note the contribution that that um, our our, uh, our Limerick captain made during the week to um, um, UL, UL uh, as joint captain of uh, UL in their winning the Yorkland um, O'Connor Cup, which is the um, ladies' football equivalent to the Sigerson Cup. Um, uh, and I, I, I watched the game, and and um, absolutely, I was proud of the performance that that uh, Roshi and Ambrose put on. Um, was absolutely fantastic, and it, it was such that she has been subsequently named on the um, Your Plate All Stars of 2022, and and we we, we sincerely congratulate. Um, um, Roshi for that. It's it's a boost for Limerick Ladies Football, as is. Um, the selection of of Iris Kennelly and yeah. Brian McKenna in the Soaring Stars 22, following following the the, the higher education um, competitions, which which concluded um, last weekend. So um, it's a long time since we had that many people involved in uh, ladies footballers involved in those competitions and involved in such a level, and three of them gaining recognition for, for their contribution. So congratulations, Roshin, Iris and Grania. Well done. Yeah, definitely well deserved for them to now, be getting, on. Getting back to the game against Van Manor, and you rightly said there, Jack, it, it, it's a repeat of the 2020 All-Ireland semi-final in which um, uh, Van Manor won, if my memory serves me right, 4-10 to 4-3. It was a day I remember it well, Jack, and... and um, I, I, I thought it was going to be a terrible long day for Limerick because Fermanagh had their first had their four goals before the first water break. So <coughs> Limerick had a huge task, and it's it's to Limerick's credit the way that they clawed their way back and and um, uh, you know brought the margin back back to um, seven points. Jack, that will count for very very little, um, very very little in 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 the. Um, on on Sunday in 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 in, in Kinnegad. I I think Limerick have been going quite well. Um, they 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 have been going very steadily. Um, Graham Shine has obviously gone down the road of a settled team. It'll be interesting to see what changes he will make from the Carlo game, or will he revert back to the to the team that the the, the, the fifteen that. Um, stood him in such good stead in the in the games against uh, both London and Offaly, but one way or the other, he has introduced a lot of new players over the over the three games. Now I I know um, the game against Carlo in many ways was a free pass, and it, it gave him the opportunity to um, um, to introduce a lot of players and give him a first taste of of. Um, of league football, and that's that's exactly what he did, and 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 did it very 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 successfully. And 
um, the players can only benefit from that. But I, I would imagine if if I were to second guess what he will do for for the um, for the semi final on Sunday in in, in Kinnegad, I I will say he will revert back near to the tried and trusted um, uh, from from those earlier rounds. Uh, it was good to see Carol Bateman um, getting <coughs> a, a full game in Carlo as backup to Sophia Hennessy. Um, and then, as I said, there was a raft of subs that came on. Rebecca Daly got a full game under her belts, almost a full game, which, you know, w- w- was a, was ideal. And, um, yeah, I, I think the are in with a right chance. They're going with a 100% record, which is unlike for Mana, who were well beaten in, in the group stages by Leitrim. And, um, like, uh, the momentum is with them, like, and um, I can't say I'm sure, um, but uh, not I can't say I'm absolutely confident but i'm pretty confident that, that limerick will give a very very good account to themselves and and could possibly um uh, avenge that defeat of two years ago <coughs> excuse me yeah they, they're they're the farm team coming into it with, with three out of three obviously for men i lost to leitrim if i put it to you like this who do you think will be meeting in the final on april the 3rd well the, the, the narrative is all about how strong leitrim are yeah um, but we've had those narratives before. I, I, I recall in 2018, the narrative was in in the All Ireland final was like we were we were making up numbers. Um, mm. love, love for the team of all the talents, and, and we know what happened. Jack, I I I I just don't want to um, project that far at this point. Um, um, and I I, I, I think Graham Shine and his management team wouldn't thank me for doing so either. I think we focus on the fun money game and um, see where it takes us and then worry about who we're playing in the final. Uh, you're doing too many interviews. You have a trend like the players. It's always next game up, all the old cliches. But look, I'll, I'll leave you off in St. Patrick's Day. I'll let you go with the cliches today. Uh, yeah. move, moving on to the men's football. I have, I'm going to just start with a difficult question for you. Who will get promoted from Division 3? And I don't want to cliche this time, no. Well, I said last week I didn't think from uh, Westmead were out of the running. Yeah. And I'm, I'm convinced that that, is the, that, that that is the situation. I'm beginning to have grave doubts that Limerick will make the, the promotion at this point. Yeah. Um, I, and I know it might be a popular thing to say, but you asked me a straight question, so I'll give you a straight answer. Um, they have a very, very difficult game on Saturday against Leash. Mm. Um, and like that's it's it is so congested, Jack. Um, look, it, it, it will give you an idea of um, how well the the, the 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 division is graded. In that here you are going into the penultimate round, and you have two counties, namely Antrim, and and um, on seven points, aren't they? Antrim and. Louth on seven points. Yeah, and two of them on Westmead, seven. Westmead and Limerick on six. You've Leash on five. You've five counties with just two points separating. For men are on five as well. On five, oh, so they are. Absolutely. You've six counties. Yeah, yeah. Wick, Wicklow are one and Longford are three. So, yeah, I mean, right. Wicklow seem to be gone. Wicklow, Wicklow are for, you know, all practical purposes, they're as good as relegated at this point, and I don't like saying it, but it's the reality of the situation, Jack. You know, they're yeah. on a maximum of five points. There are six teams now currently on five points or better. So it, 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 it's a kind of a doomed stay scenario for Wicklow as far as um, maintaining their Division Three status. Um, um, you asked me a question, Jack. I think Westmeath are going to be one of them. And I have a fancy for Louth. Yeah, I suppose for for Limerick, I suppose for all the teams, that Westmead have to play Antrim yet, and Antrim also have to play Louth. Yeah. So if you're fancying Westmead, that means Antrim will drop points, which could be a good thing for Limerick. And we did say mm-hmm. last week we'd know more after the Westmead game, but we probably know a little less, as you put it there, with the, with the six teams. I was only putting you on the spot. You couldn't, you couldn't call that mm-hmm. division, but I suppose... For Limerick going to leash, they have been very good away. They have been very good with their backs against the wall. Mm-hmm. That'll be the situation on Saturday. You wouldn't write out uh, Billy Lee's team. 
No, not at all. I'm not writing them out at all. Not writing them out at all. And they have Fermanagh to come at the Gaelic Grounds. A Fermanagh team who are in very, very good form at the moment after a very, very bad start to the league in which they got badly turned over at home by Antrim. Um, it, 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 it's, um, but, but, but the, the permutations are simple for Limerick, I think, Jack. Um, from the two remaining games, Limerick need a minimum of nine or three points, minimum, possibly four to gain promotion. Yeah. It is that tight. Now, Leash will be saying to themselves, Leash have gone through a dodgy patch. Now, um, they, 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 Billy Sheehan has taken over as the manager there. Actually, he's the sixth carry man in a row to manage Leash. There's just an interesting statistic or a useless st st statistic, whatever way you look at it. But they had a very, very good run in the Auburn Cup in which they were only narrowly beaten in the final by Dublin. And their early season form was good, but they, 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 they seemed to become derailed a small bit after they were beaten at home by Westmeath. And going into the fifth round last weekend, they had only three points. Now, they went to Ockram last week, and they had a very good win in, in, in Ockram. Now, I, my understanding, and um, I suppose it's a matter of fact, is that um, um, Wicklow are in a bit of disarray at, at the moment. Um, following the Limerick defeat, uh, um, manager Colin Kelly stood down, and um, they're in the throes of appointing a management and all that sort of stuff, which was not possibly conducive to winning big games, but... They got the two points there, and it's 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 very 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 set up for 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 um, Leash at the moment, in that they have two home games, against Limerick and against Longford, and they will probably be saying to themselves, "We're on five points, win our two home games, we're we're up to nine, we're really in the mix." But yeah. I'm I'm sure that Billy Lee will have other ideas about that, and yeah. and and rightly so, and. Uh, at, at, at the ris risk of being boring and being accused of being boring. Um, we, we have seen in 2020 the trip to Sligo, 2021 the trip to, to Leitrim when their backs were to the wall and when the chips were down and Limerick delivered. Yeah, and that's the big question saying. is, can they do it again? It's you possible, definitely... like, it's possible, but it won't be easy. That's what I said here. Yeah, like you look at the situation at the moment, if Loudon and Antrim are obviously playing each other, if they draw, they go on to eight. If Limerick and Westmead win, they both go on to eight. And I don't think that scenario is really out of the question, I would say. Westmead will definitely be favoured to win. Loudon and Antrim have been as good as each other, so draws and after cars there that you could have four teams on eight points going into the final day and then it's just going to take your pick. But for Limerick, like the defeat, the feat was a killer blow, really, to Westmead because it would have put Westmead out of the reckoning. It would have kept Limerick top with two games to go. I think it would, Jack. And, and we, we spoke about it last week, and we spoke about those permutations, and we spoke about the ramifications of both victory and defeat. And you know, the, the one thing that 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 gets me is how is it we're not able to beat Westmead? Well, you would have seen in the. Do in you the do you have the answer to that by any chance? Well, like you alluded to the fact that they, they pushed Cork all the way last year. I don't know Cork are in this array now, but I mean, they were, they are a Division 2 side. They were as recently as 2021. Any team with John Heslin is going to have a chance. Um, Luke Lachlan scored 1 3. They just showed why they were Division 2 last year. Um, mm -hmm. Limerick had their purple patch just before the halftime. Missed it probably came at a bad time for them and couldn't regroup. But as you said, Westmead are probably, even though they're in third in the table, they probably are in the driving seat to go up. And it's no surprise you would have had Westmead in it at the start. Now, disappointing for Limerick to be ahead by three at half time and, and to lose by six. But I think Westmead are probably the strongest team in the division as to the reason Limerick can't beat them. I, I don't know. Uh, we probably have the, the, the winning record in the hurling if you want to go that way. So we split it like that. But, um, yeah, it's very hard to call, Matt. If I, I would be of your opinion that Westmead would be the favourites to go up now, but I still think there there's a, there's a kick in Limerick. I think Antrim have a difficult run in. Loud obviously have to play Antrim as well. Westmead have the two of them. Very hard to call it. If I was to name a course and ask, I'd say Westmead and then Limerick. If I was to call it, Jack, I hope you're right. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it's going to be a difficult game for Billy, and his, Billy Lee and his side. But there is precedent there for them. As we said, uh, Markovic Park in 2020, Ockram last year. Um, so please God, they play Saturday night. Um, at seven o'clock in Port Leash for anyone. That and I, I say those in case the listeners forget, uh, Jack, is um, Sligo, Makovic Park in 2020, Auckland 2021 were must win games. Yeah. And and they delivered. And the odds were against them. And they were away from home. And they were just the, they were coming off the back of a defeat in both games. In yeah. 2020, it was Wexford in Recky. Last year, it was Offaly. So uh, the, the omens are definitely good for Limerick. But like as you said, Leash are a formidable team. They're getting a bit of a run together. They It's must win for both sides, realistically, because for Leash, if they lose, they're, they could be level with Longford at the end of the weekend, you know. So like they'll be pulled into the relegation. Because Longford have Wicklow, haven't they? Yes. So, I mean, you'd be fancying Longford a win there that... Leash could be pulled into that relegation um, dogfight. For Limerick as well, like, six points should be enough, but you never know. You never know, Jack. That, that's the point. And, and were Limerick to lose to Leash and were Longford to beat Wicklow, they're only a point ahead of Longford. And Longford, for some reason, contrived to go to Mullingar and win. Yeah. <laughs> you this know? group met, like, I would say if you did one of them charts that X beat Y and Y beat Z and it went around in a circle that you'd have every team has kind of beat one another that like you just couldn't couldn't call it but I wasn't look, good Limerick, at that my Jack no, I wasn't good at circles but uh, the best look to, to Billy Lee and his side anyway because look they've given us some great days out recently and a win a win in, in leash and it's all to play for and you're, you're one game I, away I, I, I believe Limerick can win it yeah, you know, I believe can they win it? But I ask the question. I believe they can win it. But I ask ask the question: Can they do it? Yeah, I think they can. But look, it, it remains to be seen. Saturday evening be very, very interesting uh, a clash, and we'll definitely know more about this division. I think after this weekend again. But as I said, you could have four teams at the top with uh with um eight points, and you could also have three teams in at the other side with five with one to go down. So. Division three is looking definitely like the most exciting division out of the lot, but um, we'll we'll move on from that. Uh, the hurlers are, are back in action this Sunday at quarter two in the Gaelic Crowns. They host Offaly, um, and with no disrespect to Offaly, this would usually be a game where John Kiley is fairly experimental. You can play mostly reserve, not reserve, but the fringe players, um, such as the standing of Limerick and Offaly in, in current hurling landscape, but. With championship four weeks away, are you giving your first fifteen a run out, or what will he thinking be? Do you I, think? I I, I I I I would go for that, Jack. I think. Yeah. Um, because it it it, it is Limerick's last game now, last competitive game before the, the 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 championship, and and we know that our opponents in the first round of the championship, Cork are guaranteed a league semi-final and potentially a league final. Yeah. So I I, I think that uh, that um we we we, we I, I I just don't know like uh, as we spoke about the hazards of 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 um trying to second guess um John Kiley's choice and um, uh, uh, naming his team um I, the, the one the, the one thing that I that I would be um uh, very interested to see um is um, what will be the, the position with Mikey Casey? Yeah. It was absolutely fantastic, fantastic to see Mikey Casey um, back on, on the panel um, the, the the last day against um, oh, Claire in Ennis. Claire, yeah. So um, is John Kiley going to give him a run out? I suspect at some stage during the game, We'll possibly see Mikey Casey um, that would be great because that would certainly herald his complete comeback. Um, because God knows he has been through enough in the last couple of years, and um, uh, we know what Mikey Casey brings to the team, and we know what he brings to the squad. And he certainly, I suppose, he he he, he brings a headache to John Kiley as well. 
in so yeah. far as that, that he has Sean Finn, he has Dan Morrissey, he has Barry Nash in 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 um, in situ. He's rich English, absolutely breathing down their necks, and now he's going to have Mike Casey. Now, I, most managers would probably die for that type of situation, but um, the, 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 he has difficult calls to make. And um, I certainly think at some stage during the game, we'll see Mikey Casey. Yeah, it'd be great to see him. And as you said, it, it would be kind of that completing the comeback for John Kiley. Like that full back line, you'd, ideally, you'd be wanting to play the five. Now, I think Barry Nash could go up the field, yes. I, I still think there's a chance of that. But he does offer something completely different to the rest of them. And it has worked really well for Limerick. Um, I suppose with Barry, if you're... You could play him either way if you wanted him. If you wanted a man marking job, you've Rich English, Sean Finn, Mikey Casey to do that. But if you want someone that's following a lad out and getting on the ball, that's that's your Barry Nash. I think he's been the best and, player. And, and, and holding ways can mix it with the best of them, you know. Yeah, I think Barry Nash has been Limerick's best player so far this year. Um, he's played every game, I think, maybe Barry one, if not all mm. of them. Yeah. Um, I think Colin he's, he's, he's he's been outstanding and like he he was absolutely outstanding during the during the the Munster Senior Cup when he was captain and and um, he he showed and when we spoke about this before Jack in this in this medium that you know he he showed extraordinary leadership qualities. Mm. It would be remiss for us, Matt, not to I suppose go to the worst case scenario and that there could be a relegation final. Like I mean, it's it's not out of the realms of possibility. Like if you're you're definitely pressing panic buttons <laughs> if that's the case. But like, how much of a threat are Offaly? With all due disrespect to them, the, the only thing I would I, I, I would say about Offaly is obviously they're adapting to life at um, uh, in Division One. Um, they're a county that has given us quite an amount of trouble over the years and notwithstanding that infamous from a Limerick point of view all Ireland final but they, 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 they've, they've given us trouble other, other than that um, I remember them depriving us of a point um, in, in the league one year and, and condemning us to stay in Division 1B and I remember beating us and total us in the championship and um, on, a, on a, I, just, I think it was a Friday evening game when, in the qualifiers and um, uh, they beat us in the Gaelic rounds in, in the league. <coughs> um, I, I wouldn't be taking them for granted. And uh, I, I'll tell you what, what would give you more food for thought as well was that Offaly's best performance in the league was the last time out in Wexford Park. Yeah, I was I was going to get onto that. that like Which, Limerick's best performance was obviously the last day out as well, but Offaly will yeah. take confidence from going to Chadwick Park and doing as well as Limerick did, realistically. I know there were seven points compared to three, but they, they did as well as Limerick did against Wexford. Absolutely, absolutely. And they, they, they will take confidence out of it. And they they, 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 they come to the Gaelic grounds and like they, they're going to throw everything at Limerick. They're going to throw the kitchen sink at them. Yeah, and that's the thing for Limerick. And people have said it to me, like, what do I think has gone wrong? And I just feel that every team that plays, that plays Limerick, it's their All Ireland final, you know. Until until you get there, you're playing the All Ireland champions. That awfully won't be nervous about playing Limerick because nothing will be expected of them. It'll just be okay. Limerick will finally get their, their first win of the campaign, and it'll just be lowly awfully. But I mean, they literally have nothing to lose. For Limerick, like, is it nearly a, a lose lose situation? That even if you do get the win, it, it'll be pretty much written off and. To be fair to Offaly, they're probably not going to hit the standard that Cork will be in four weeks' time. Yeah, yeah, you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't in this one, you know. I, I honestly think, and um, yeah, I, 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 I think it's, 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 you know, you win well against Offaly, and you're expected, you're, you're expected to win well, you know. You, you, you win. You just get over the line against Offaly and. Those nagging doubts that are there, they, they continue and perish the thought then that you lose to Offaly. Like, the, the sky is about to fall down. Yeah, because, like, realistically, we're talking about Cork, that they're going to have a league semi-final and maybe final, like, Limerick could invariably have the situation where, where they have a relegation final to play, and most likely it's going to be Antrim after mm -hmm. their, their last leash unless they can pull it out of the fire. But 
I presume you're going for Limerick win, Matt. And oh, probably yeah, fairly I'm going for Limerick win, Jack. And um, uh, I, I hope for the first time in the league, and I put my hands up that I'll be right. That it'll be a, a first win for, for, for Limerick. But yeah, look, if it's hard, it's hard to see past Limerick. Um, but they will need a performance. Just oh, absolutely, they will need a performance, and that's what John Kiley would be looking for, and, and looking looking for a performance because, like, he 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 at this point in time, it's it's make your mind up time as to what your your possible championship team will be, and yeah. um, like he, the championship is only four weeks away, and like this is the last game. Now I know you have a free run in them. That 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 there can be arguments, you know, that that, that the games that Cork will have would will be will be will be good for them. But there's also the counter argument, which says that you get a free run, less likelihood of injury, and all that sort of thing, and that you 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 can just focus on the Cork game, while Cork would probably have to focus. They will have to focus on a semi final, and possibly a league final, and were they to get to the league final. You, you know the sort of pressure that will be heaped on them for the simple reason that Cork haven't won the league since 1998. Yeah. Um, I suppose for Limerick as well, that they are probably in a fairly luxurious position that obviously you can't replicate the, the intensity and heat of championship, but Limerick's second 15 are good enough to go toe show to first 15 that their training games can be as good as a match day if you can get the right... Intensity, I'm sure John Kiley and Paul Knurk and the lads inside will be able to to get it fairly close to, to match sharpness that they, they will have time and liberty yeah, ball we, is... we, we, we've seen in the last couple of years, Jack, about the importance of timing and timing your peak and, and timing your, your 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 peak of readiness. And by God, Limerick have done that very successfully in the last couple of years. And um we, we certainly hope that um you know that I, I'm, I'm sure, even though the league has been going on and the Munster Senior Cup has been going on, um, that foremost in John Kiley's mind and uppermost in his mind has been the date with Cork and Easter Sunday, you know? Yeah, and it, it's it's closing in quickly, Matt. Very, very quickly. Um, just in the league as a whole, um, Cork, Wexford is a is a fairly dead rubber in the other group. Then you have Watford and Kilkenny. Uh, the winner w- will go through, from my reckoning. You have Leash against Dublin. Oh, yeah, the winner is the winner is certain to go go through. But um, there, there are a few permutations there. Um, you you have um, um, Dublin are playing Antrim, I think, isn't it? Yes. Um, Dublin are really not out of the mix yet. But they'd have a huge win over Antrim, and were Kilkenny to beat Waterford, it would be Kilkenny and Dublin would go through. Yeah, if. If uh, Waterford beat Kilkenny and Dublin win, they're in. They're on. Uh, I just look at the table now. Waterford on seven. Their plus minus is forty-five. Yeah, <laughs> it's very high. Uh, Kilkenny one point behind. Their plus minus is thirty-two, and then you have Dublin one point behind that, and they're actually minus twelve. Yeah, but minus. 12. A win for Dublin and a win for Waterford. We'll see the two of them go through. Um, Waterford will top the table if they win. Um, you could have a scenario where, oh no, you couldn't. I was going to say if Watford and Kilkenny draw, they'll both. Well, if Kilkenny draw and Dublin win, it'll go to head to head. So Kilkenny or Dublin need Watford to win essentially to have any chance of yes. going through. But if you were to call it, that I would say those five teams are in the reckoning: Cork, Wexford, Watford, Kilkenny, Dublin. I I wouldn't I I, I wouldn't discount um, Watford beating Kilkenny at all at the moment. Yeah, and I, I think Liam Cahill will want to put silverware onto, I suppose, not rumours, but there is a lot of speculation that Waterford are the team to beat Limerick. Now, I know everyone has beat Limerick so far in the league, but you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying, that they can maybe just back up an All-Ireland final in 2020, mm-hmm. a semi-final last year, and they just run into one of the best teams of all time. Like, that just happens. Yeah. That if they get that bit of silverware, there could be confidence. And, like, looking at that mess, like, how could you pick three to come out of Munster? in eight weeks' time, realistically. You just couldn't. You, cu- you couldn't, Jack, and don't attempt to ask me when we're, when we're previewing it. I'll wait, till, I'll wait till after round four when we know, and you can tell yeah. you can tell me then how, how right yeah, you were. Because, you know, Tip, uh, Tip Rary would look to be outsiders at this stage, but they're motoring along nicely, Jack. 
Yeah, they're yeah, walking can... along nicely. I would never discount Tipperary from anything. Clare are coming along nicely. You've Limerick, the All Ireland champions. You've Cork, you've Waterford. By God, what a what what a couple of months of hurling it's going to be. Yeah, and you can't take into account the importance of having home games in Munster. Like when you go down to to Ennis or Semple Stadium, like it's a cauldron against you. Like if you're the away mm-hmm. team, like so that's not, not not to mention Walsh Park. Yeah, like that's four. That's a four or five point swing on a good day. Like realistically, like that you could beat anything. But look, that remains to be seen. Um, Limerick on Sunday at quarter to two. Hopefully, there'll be a big crowd there. Um, I'm fairly sure the Limerick hurlers are in the parade today. Um, I think it's starting at twelve. So maybe if you're listening to this, you're you're listening back or you're missing the parade. I think it's twelve in, in Limerick. Yeah, it's, man, it, it's um, it's it, it, it's a lovely touch by by the uh, organisers. Of, of the Limerick Parade to to have have um, Limerick colours in in the role of Grand Marshal of the Parade, and I think it's it's very very appropriate and very very fitting because um, the normal ram- razzmatazz that goes with winning in All Ireland and the usual round of celebrations, this Limerick team have been denied it. Um, mm. They have been denied the adulation of the of their fans at, at close quarters. So I, I think it's very, very appropriate that that, that it, it, it is members of, of the Limerick squad, John Kiley and the Limerick squad, that will be leading the Limerick Parade. And I think well done to the organisers of the parade and Limerick City and County Council um, for for having him on this. I think it's it's a lovely touch. Yeah, and you, you see the reaction of youngsters in the Gaelic rounds just straight onto the field afterwards. And to fair to Limerick Herders, like it's been mostly defeats this year, but always very gracious with their time. And sign autographs and stuff. So today is a, a nicer setting to to meet them, and hopefully in Crow Park in a few months will be will be a few making onto the field for after Iron Final. But we'll finish off with some more hurling. That um, Ards Colerich are in the Crow Cup final. Um, they didn't win Munster, but they've regrouped very very well. Be presentation College Galway and the Leinster champions, good counsel New Ross within five days of each other, like grueling schedule for Ards Colerich, and I suppose. They don't have the pressure of being once the champions. Tulla had that, and they lost St. Cairns with a very, very familiar sight for Niall Morn and the Arts Colerich team at the black and white hoops of St. Cairns College, who themselves didn't win Le- Leinster, didn't even get to the final, but are there on an Ireland final day. Just like the Kilkenny of the noughties, you just can't put them down. Absolutely, you can't. And... Um... It, it's going to be a big test. There's, there's no doubt. They obviously have regrouped. Um, they played their get out of jail card in 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 the Leinster Championship. They lost, and they, they subsequently got back into it. Um, people have been asking me during the week how they're back in it. They're, they're back in it simply because um, Dublin Schools, which is a combination side, got to the Leinster final. And um, they were beaten by good counsel, but as a combination side, they're not allowed to take part in the All Ireland final. Um, so what happened in those circumstances was that there was a playoff between the beaten semi finalists in Leinster, and St Kieran's won it. Um, and with it, they won the right to represent Leinster in the All Ireland series. Now it's the it's the fourth All Ireland appearance of Arts called Reach. And all the three previous ones have been against St. Cairns. And I think there's been a semi-final thrown in there as well. Yeah, and, I think um, there was a semi-final in 18. I think it was 18, yeah, the yeah. semi-final. And St. Cairns have come out on top all the time. But um, I saw both semi-finals. I, 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 I viewed them on stream. And and um, I have to say I was impressed by both sides. Um, both sides were comprehensive winners um, over... over um, um, as you rightly said, St. Kieran's over Harty Cup winners, St. Joseph's Tulla. And um, uh, once they got going after a slow start, Arts Gold Reach were way too good for, for good counsel of New Ross. Um, there, there isn't as much pressure. Uh, the pressure has been on, uh, been on Arts Gold Reach in the previous um, meetings, in that they probably, as Harty Cup uh, champions, would have gone into those games, Jack, as favourites. Yeah. And they, they would have been carried, carrying the tag of favourites. So, like, the, the pressure is off now once they lost the Hartley Cup. The, and, um, you know, they're, they're back in, rebouncing back, back into bonus territory, you might say. 
But the only thing that might add a bit of pressure to it at this point is the fact that it is in Croke Park. Yeah. Um, for most, if not all, of the art school players, um, it will it will probably be a first appearance in Croke Park. Um, whilst for many of St. Kim's, um, they may have been there before with minors, with Kilkenny and all, all that sort of thing. But uh, on paper, and looking at both semifinals, um, it, 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 it looks to be very, very even. Um, are St. Kim's Art School Reach's bogey team? Yes, they are. Can they can they lay that bogey? Can Art School lay that bogey? Um, yes, they can. Do I think they'll do it today? I do. I think it might be that day, and it will be the first time since 1966 that 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 a Limerick school has taken custody of the Dr. Crow Cup, and um, I, 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 I genuinely believe that Art School Reach can do it. And I, I think they have the wherewithal. Um, I, I think the open spaces of Croke Park, you have you've Vince Harrington, you have you've, um, um, Marino Bond, JJ Carey, um, Shane O'Brien, Niall O'Farrell, David Kennedy, you know, Keen Scully, big, big, big names, big, big names, Jack. And um, uh, I, I, I think that they can make it happen. And, uh, you, you know, I'm, I, I think it's going to be odd scholars day today. You waited till 40 minutes in the podcast to actually give a definitive prediction. <laughs> For anyone that doesn't know about, say, Kieran's College, this isn't really anything to do with today's final, but like they were able to beat, I'm just looking at it now, the Arts Grish team in uh, 2010, the first time they won the Hearty. That team had just gone through the lineup there. They had Barry O'Connell at fullback. They had Alan Dempsey at wingback. Declan Hannon was centre back. They had Jamie Shannon, who was one of All Ireland with Clare. They had Mark Carmody, Shane Dowling, and Brendan O'Connor in the half forward line, which we've seen. We've obviously seen Shane Dowling win All Ireland, but they're um, perennial figures for senior clubs in Limerick. You had a young Keen Lynch that came on in that final 2010. He was probably just about 15 at that stage. So it kind of signaled how good he was going to be. 2016. You had Ron Connolly was full back. You drew on Bile in the centre back in that team. Brian Ryan was in midfield. You had Peter Casey. Uh, you had Connor Bile in the full forward line. You had Paul O'Brien and Roy Duff from Mungris. Um, just fantastic teams. And St. Kieran's have always been able to get over the line. And for yeah, uh, but you you're right there, Jack. When you when you're saying all over all over the line, but uh, again, I'm talking from memory. And I don't know if you have the scores up up in front of you, but I think St. Kieran's won in 2010 by three points, and 2011 by two points, and 2016 by two points. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. I've done it. I just did it yesterday. It was 211 to 8, 115 to 113, and I think yeah. it was 116 to 114 or something in the other Like it's yeah. just been so, very, like, very close. They've been very, very, very close. And, uh, you know, I know every year is different when it comes to colleges, but, um, you, you, you know, you, you you can say that certainly good fortune was was probably on the side of St. Kieran's in those games. So, yeah, I, I stick with, with what I think. I, I think Art School will, will be quite capable of doing it. Yeah, you said last week the, the losing streak to Westmead, you said it had to end some stage. No. Unfortunately, it didn't last week, but hopefully, yeah. Hertz Kilrisha's losing streak to St. Kieran's will, will finish today. That's obviously St. Patrick's Day Thursday. If you're listening back um, over the weekend, that game has passed, and hopefully, Hertz Kilrisha are Crow Cup champions for the first time in their history. Because, look, if you're knocking on the door long enough for an All Ireland, you do deserve to get there. Like, it's not a flash in the pen. Even though it's a completely new team every year, that's just the nature of colleges, as you mm-hmm. mentioned today. If you're Consistently knocking on the door, you will you will get over the line eventually. Yeah, but it, it would it would be a marvelous boost for not just Art School Reach, but for Limerick Hurling, Jack. Um when when you tie it in with um UL, even though I know they were shown um there, there was very few Limerick players on it winning the, the Fitzgibbon Cup, but significantly um um UL winning the Freshers All Ireland powered by Limerick players. Yeah, powered is right. So it it, it, it it would augur very well for Limerick Hurling in the future um, where our school to bring it because I, at one stage, one of the line-outs there, um, um, it, it was 11-4. Yeah. 
uh, 11 players from Limerick and four from Clare. Yeah, there is a there is a strong um, Limerick core in that team, and I suppose for Arts Gallery, very really strong. They had Cahal O'Neill, Colin Coughlin, and Aidan O'Connor, and I'm sure a load of the current team and more on the team they would have played in 2020 or 2021 that just missed out on it. Like so, I mean, it's it's a redemption for them because I remember seeing Cahal O'Neill the first time I saw him play, and I think you might have been on Cowns that day it was 2018. Um, Article final against Middleton, or was it CBC below in Mallow? And what he yeah. was 15 on the same day and just electric. And like he obviously missed out on the chance to play when he was in sixth year. So I think for Article Reach, it's, it's making up for last time. So, so please God, they can get over over the line today. Um, we have three quarters an hour in the clock there, man. I know it's St. Patrick's Day, it's, it's a holiday. Yeah, yeah, for... yeah, our our, our um, Komogi girls. Oh yes, yes, yes. Unfortunately, find themselves in um, in a relegation playoff, most most likely with down, but um, not before they put Claire to the pin of that colour. Um, yeah, and you could see talking from John Lewis afterwards. There was an upbeat mood because it was definitely the best performance of the year from the team. Just they conceded the last five. They just couldn't once Claire got the momentum. They just couldn't reverse the trend. But it was a good all round performance in general. It had to be because um, Clare pushed Cork. Um, uh, they, they, I think they were eventually beaten by by five points by Cork uh, in Ennis. And um, but uh, the, the the second Cork goal only came in in time added on. And like they were distinctly unlucky not to beat Kilkenny in Ennis when they when they lost by a point. Yeah. And um, uh, so. Like Clare were formidable, but we did make the point last last week that um, it was the first away game for Clare and the first home game for Limerick. I I can see you cringing there now. You're saying O'Callaghan oh, is going to rant on again, but I'm not. I'm leaving it at that. Yeah. Um, uh, but uh, all all the omens were that it was going to be a tough day at the office for Limerick. But Limerick made most of the running. Um, yeah, they definitely Saturday. made most of the running. Just and um, you know, we're distinctly unlucky. Claire just got a run and got a run at the right time, and and um, you know those those couple of late points um, won the, won the game for Claire. But um, John Lewis was entitled to to be um, to be very very pleased with the performance o- overall, and um, I I would be pretty confident at this remove Jack that Limerick will win the playoff against Down. Yeah, if they play like they played on, on Saturday, um, just for longer periods. I think the two games back to back, Limerick led both games against Clare and Camogie mm-hmm. and Westmead in the football and just I got a run against them then in the yeah. second half and just couldn't get it back. But I think yeah, as you said, they'll definitely be favourites just having been the top grade for so long, but their their performance are getting better yeah, in the team. Plus plus the fact that um down or without their best player. Sarka McCartan. McCartan, yeah. Who, who, as we said last week, has transferred her allegiance. She's now living in Cork and um, she has linked up with St. Finbar's in Cork and is on, on the Cork Singer Camogie team and doing very, very well with him. Yeah. No, so yeah. That, that will give you an idea of the standard that she is. Um, she's got a couple of goals in the league for Cork so far and Cork are true to the league final after their win. Well, not their win, but their draw with Kilkenny, which was enough. On, on scoring difference to get him through, um, so I I I'd be pretty confident that that Limerick will have the measure of 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 um, of um, down and down. Pres- and preserve their status. Yeah, we'll look we'll look forward to that game in more when we get there. But a positive performance from the Kamoi, as I would say, wasn't the result you wanted. Oh yeah, abso- abso- absolutely positive. And um, you, you 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 must remember that that. Uh, um, John Lewis was confronted with with replacing a couple of of, of um, key stalwarts, and um, as, as I said um, uh, last week, um, she made no appearance. But um, every week must be counting um, that that Neve Ryan will be back on board, which would be a huge boost. Um, like she she had a hand injury, and um, like she's a huge loss. And also a huge loss to Graham Shine. Yeah. 
look, it'll be it'll be a huge boost for Limerick when she's back and hopefully back in time for Down. It isn't 100 percent sure it could be Tub- Dublin yet, I think, but I think we're looking at Down. Um 50 minutes on the clock, Matt. I think that's plenty for, for a bank holiday. Um they could be asking where's our bit of green um, for our national holiday. I have a green oh no, that's my blue sleeve. I have a green sleeve here. Um that's the best I can do. Have you any shamrock or anything on you? No, I haven't been out, Jack. <laughs> They'll say we're a disgrace. I'm, I'm housebound these days, as you know. You know. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, that's that's grand. That at uh, fifty minutes is plenty. Look, we'll wish everyone a, a happy St Patrick's Day and um, to get out to the parades as much as all as they can. Um, to Article Reach today, and to the three Limerick teams at the weekend. Obviously, the footballers on Saturday evening, and then the Camogie and hurlers on Sunday. But again, a huge thank you. To you, Matt, and to all the listeners, again, a well, happy St. Patrick's Day. Before we go, Jack, of course, um, also starting this weekend oh, uh, yes. you know, on the domestic front, uh, is a whole there's a whole myriad of league games down for um, for decision over the weekend. Um, and, like, the leagues last year, Jack, you know, they were very, very competitive and were very, very, very interesting. Um, with with the structure that that was there with them, and um, let's hope that we'll have more of the same this year. And and um, uh, they actually kick off today, Jack. Yeah, uh, they, they, they kick off today with, with a couple of games on today, and they're on over the weekend and all that sort of thing. And we wish we wish all the teams the very best to look. And um, uh, um, last year's structure was very 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 good. And it's more of the same this year. It's and and let's hope that. Uh, and of course, last year, Jack, it got because of the pandemic and because of the lack of activity, it got huge buy-in from the clubs. And yeah. I, I genuinely think that the clubs saw the value of it. And um, like, it, it would be great if we got more of the same. Huge buy-in, play the games, play the games when they're supposed to be played, and 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 that sort of thing, and get the most out of them because, like. They're going to have a break after the league um, for the championship, but the championship, Jack, is not light years away. No, it's it's July. The, the first weekend of July. Um, I mean, it's probably 12, 13 weeks away, maybe. I'm not sure now, but yeah, the best I have it written down there. You, you, you had me warned to, to mention the leagues, but I forgot, of course. But yeah, best look to all the teams uh, in the in the leagues this weekend, especially Bellasine Junior B footballers. Um, I'll leave with that. So, Matt, um, thanks very much, and we'll talk again soon. Okay, Jack, you're welcome. Impression the game, we get all with what you put into. It's like a walk of life. If you're good enough, go and get it. No more about it. But not so much control in the centre of the field from Phil Kenny as Richie Bennett sends it high and over the bar. If your mother sends you down to the shop for a pound's worth of goods, and she gives you fifty pence, you can't get the pounds worth of goods, can you? Oh, well, Shorty Buckley to do that to Tommaso Shea. He deserves to score from here. One of the highlights of the second game. Then we went out there from the world court today. No more about him. He made all the run. That was it. Put the ball over the barrel. The fact that it, and that's it. No ifs, no buts. Is there much time left? We have a couple of injuries. Here comes Kieran Curry. Curry leading the charge of the left brigade. 45 minutes out. He's a chance to score. No sympathy in this game for anybody. 